It's as if I'm doing a rodeo. Holy cow! Hey there, fellas. Right, so what are we up to today? Here's what we've got. A ball joint, a suspension arm, and as always, it's laid out on top of one of our cars that's often subject to experiments. Here's what we have in mind this time. Okay, so those of you who dabble in the art of drifting know the following. If we take a new ball joint, and I mean nice and factory fresh, now if you try to make it move, well, good luck with that. It ain't happening. Now let's have a look at the bushing in this arm. Let's say you've put a new bushing in there. And before tightening it down, you need to load the suspension up in order to increase their longevity. Anyway, I suggest we rip out all of the bushings, and I mean each and every one we have in the suspension. And instead, install some bearings. We're putting together a bearing suspension. We're already rocking suspension bearings in some places. Yeah, this should be fun. Let's do this. Replacing bushings with bearings. How does that affect the suspension? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Here's the situation, fellas. We've removed these here links. This particular one is a trailing reactive something or another. So we went and pried out the bushings. Now, as you can see, this here is slightly tapered. We went to a store and found ourselves these bearings. And just look at that fitment. They both have a slight taper to them, so they're a perfect match. Next, we machined some grommets, which we insert on one side. We've already got one right here. So I'll remove this. And now we insert the bearing and grommet. Which results in this nifty deal. The bearings are doing their thing, but these do differ from bushings in operation. As in there is going to be zero resistance when the link goes up and down. A normal bushing gets twisted, but here there's simply nothing to twist. Yeah, I gather it's going to be pretty awesome on these bearings. So that covers the short links, while the longer ones presented us with a problem. We're looking at some nasty corrosion, which has eaten straight through the eyelet. So we're gonna have to go about these in a slightly different manner. We'll cut out the rotten bits, and weld on a few sleeves for mounting the bearings. Then we assemble everything, Insert those grommets and secure the entire lot. These links will also articulate freely. So that's the situation with the rear axle. And these are for the front. As in, we'll be fitting these to the upper and lower arms up front as soon as we finish putting together the rear suspension. So we're gonna tend to the front a bit later, but for now, let's work on the rear. Alright, guys, time to get back to work. Alright guys, let me show you a little something. We've unscrewed this, the panard rod is just hanging there, and so now... There is literally no movement left to right. And there you go. Like this is super stiff. There is a bit of movement on rubber, but here, zero. Right, let's lift it slightly and get everything finalized. Up front everything is very crisp. It does go up and down, but here's where the bearings take their toll. There is absolutely no fore and aft movement of the suspension arms. So on traditional rubber bearings you do get slight movement, even though it's barely even noticeable, but these bearings multiply all of that by zero. The arms are deprived of their capability to move back and forth. The only way for them to go is either up or down. That'll do. Now there is the matter of final assembly. 
We do up the springs, steering components, braking system. And as soon as we're done, let's go out and do some testing. Let's do this. So we haven't bolted down the shocks just yet. They're attached to the arms, but not to the strut towers. There aren't any bushings in there that could create some sort of resistance. And just look at how easily you can bring the car right down to the bump stops. The bushings do bind up, after all. So there is a bit of resistance there, but the bearings just spin. <laughs> Look at how easily it takes a nosedive. I guess it's time to attach the shocks, drive around and figure out where to go from there. Let's get to it. So after fitting the shock absorbers, everything just became so much nicer. Yeah, this is all pretty good. Nevertheless, I could almost bring it down to the bump stops. Now, if we were still running regular bushings, it would be extremely difficult to bring the car down so low with your bare hands. Well, when you're acting alone, at least. Alright, I think it's time to begin testing. Let's do this. And here we are. Rolling on bearings. What can I even say? Oh, yeah. You can really tell that the suspension has more articulation. You so much as hit a bump, and you can hear a... What is it that you hear? Some kind of knock? As if the shocks can't handle the weight, which makes sense, given that there aren't any bushings that could help them out. Yep. I can definitely hear it when the strut compresses. The nose dives lower down. You can really tell that there's a drastic increase in the pitch. <laughs> Otherwise, it seems to be okay. The car is a bit more sluggish, but, well, it is what it is. Somebody stole our bushings and replaced them with freaking bearings. And now we begin the torture testing. Nearing the jump, where we test a bunch of our stuff. Wow, it actually did pretty well back there. I was expecting a big hit. But no, it took that like a champ. Will it hit the bump stops? It did not. Isn't that nice? Let's keep driving. The road is super beat up. And look at how hard the suspension is working around here. It's not half bad. It hasn't driven this well in a while. On one hand, it does seem as if we improved the ride comfort thanks to the increase in articulation. But on the other hand, rubber bushings appear to complement the shock absorbers in a way. Let's say you hit a pothole, and so the spring decompresses rapidly, at which point you hear a knock coming from the shock, with it fully extending. That's how it sounds. So you can... yeah, you can hear it pretty well. Anyway, so this got us thinking. So, given a situation when the suspension links are unchecked, as in they can freely move up and down, due to a total lack of bushings that could stop that movement, why don't we remove the shocks altogether? We have established that bushings do keep the suspension links in place to a certain extent, but imagine if we were to take the shocks out, leaving nothing to hold them in place. I reckon I'll be losing springs by the time I get to that end of our complex. Let's do it! Time to bring the car in, rip the shocks out, and continue driving. Alright, look here. We've completely removed the shock absorbers, so none in the back, none up front. Let's go check to see how many springs evacuate, and just generally how the car behaves. I am a bit worried. This is gonna make me seasick. We are ready, let's go. And we're rolling. I just can't wait to see how it handles that jump, the one I hit earlier in the episode. This would be way better if the rear end wasn't hopping around. 
It actually did quite well, look at that. No trouble at all. Well, pretty much. Waft delicious. Oh wow, it's hopping down the road like crazy. That was pretty cool. Why is this thing so darty? Oh my god, is it hard to drive? It wasn't too bad doing the jump in the other direction. It's as if I'm doing a rodeo. Holy cow! The suspension literally can't take a hit on either side of the car. Doesn't even matter. Something bad just happened. I'm not gonna make it back. I'm standing in place and the car is still rocking up and down. What happened? Right, what's going on? I heard a terrible screeching noise. Oh, right, there you go. That's a good way to go. How about down there? So I take it bolting down the suspension arms was a heavy burden, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah, the thread got sheared off. Holy cow. Right, that was nice. There you go, fellas. For some reason, we lost the front spring. When I was expecting the rears to skip. That's what you get for driving around with no shocks. Alright fellas, to sum up this bearing experiment. This actually makes the suspension much more compliant. The car is way more plush. It begins to wallow and roll. For the obvious reason that the bearings which replaced the bushings just let the arms move. So is that good or bad? It's difficult to say. Though there's no doubt that this does increase the stress put upon the shock absorbers. I'd say this was very much to be expected, you see, the ones we had fitted to this car, well, like I said, when you hit a pothole, the spring literally shoves the suspension arm with quite a bit of force, I mean, four tiny little bushings, and what a massive effect they have in terms of helping the shocks. So the spring pushes, the shock gives in, and you get a massive hit, since the shock absorber has nowhere to extend, with the piston valve reaching the edge of the tube. Those were very unpleasant sensations. But when driving on a perfect road, good luck finding one of those. Anyway, the thing just wafts. This is a rather light car, it's no Volga by any stretch, which very much feels like a big boat by the way, that's if we were to look at Russian cars specifically. Anyway, we were able to get a lot of to ride as nicely as a mid-sized luxury car. Yeah, that seems like an appropriate way to describe it. Okay, fellas, we're looking at a 107% success rate here. Those bearings actually gave us a pretty cool effect in softening the ride. Plus, you guys saw what happens when you remove the shock absorbers, as in the car started tearing itself apart. Again, due to the arms encountering zero resistance with those bearings in place. So this is the culmination of that story. This was all pretty curious. Night, fellas. And that's all I have for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right. Catch you later. Друзья, до подведения итогов нашей акции осталось буквально пару дней. Ха, так ты еще и не знал, что за акция? Сейчас я быстренько расскажу. Все на самом деле, как всегда, очень просто. Заходи в наш интернет-магазин, приобретай вот такие подарки для себя и своих близких и автоматически становись участником нашей акции. А при подведении итогов нашей акции мы найдем новых владельцев для вот такого замечательного iPad, iPhone и Яндекс станции. Ну а если вдруг у вас возникли 
проблемы при оформлении либо оплаты заказа, переходите в раздел «Контакты». Там множество способов связаться с нами, и мы обязательно вам поможем. В общем, залетайте, заказывайте, радуйтесь сами, радуйтесь своих близких. С наступающим!